Good morning, First Baptist. Lovely day out there, a little nippy, but it's warming up quick. Uh, I hope all of you are in your places, got your Bibles. Um, things uh, are still clicking along as normal, as we know normal right now, but um, it's uh, it won't be long. They're still talking and, and still trying to uh, get the get the states opened back up. I hope they don't do it too quickly. Um, but uh, the the church renovation is coming along well. Uh, we're getting very close to having that all complete. So probably by the time that uh, all this is over and we're allowed to come back to church, uh, we'll be in the sanctuary. And what a blessing that'll be. Uh, I can't wait to get up behind the pulpit again and out of my office chair. So uh, I've given you all time to settle in. Got your Pop-Tarts and cups of coffee and whatever this morning. Uh, but I hope you have your Bibles. I hope you have your notebook and paper. Uh, a little bit different message this morning. And you'll see as we go on and get through it and get into it. Um this morning I titled the message, um, Control-Alt-Delete. Control-Alt-Delete. At one time, these were my three favorite keys on the keyboard. Uh, when starting out with my first computer and not having any knowledge about this device, uh, let alone my personal IT guy, and I still don't have much knowledge about this device, but these three keys saved me more than once. For those of you who don't know about these three keys, uh, on a personal computer with the Windows operating system, Control-Alt-Delete is the combination of keyboard keys that the computer user can press at the same time to terminate an application task or to reboot the operating system. It means to have it shut down and then restart itself. Another term I quickly learned about was cookie. No, not our beloved cookie. This is a different type of cookie. This is a small text file created by a website that is stored in your computer, either temporarily for that session only or permanently on the hard disk. Cookies provide a way for a website to recognize you and keep track of your preferences. These have a way of accumulating, slowing down the performance and speed of your process. Another lifesaver when it came to my computer was the act of purging. This means to systematically and permanently remove old and unneeded data. The term purge is stronger than delete. It is often possible to regain deleted uh, objects by undeleting them, but purged objects are gone forever. Let's have a word of prayer this morning, and we'll continue the message. Father in heaven, I come to thee this morning through the blood of Jesus, and I, I thank you, Father, for this day. I thank you, God, uh, for your blessings, for, your, for our salvation for your grace and your love and your mercy to us. Father, so many out there today are hurting. So many lives have been changed by the virus. Uh, Father, our, our, our hearts and our minds and our thoughts and prayers go out to all those that are involved with elder care in Ripley. Father, I just pray for them this morning. We lift up those families. God, I pray, Lord, that you would intervene there in a special way. God, that your will would be done. Uh, Lord, for all those, Lord, that have uh, contracted the, the virus, the families that are affected, God, we lift them up to you. As always, lift up the, the health care workers and, and the, the, uh, those first responders, all of the, the folks that are, are out there with the, the necessary jobs that, that keep our, our world running and our, keep our nation uh, uh, moving forward. Lord, we pray for them today. Uh, Lord, we pray for our, our leaders in Washington. God, I just uh, ask you, Father, that you would uh, continue to be with them. Father, give them wisdom. Uh, Lord, uh, 
that only you can, godly wisdom, Lord, that uh, they will make the right decisions. They'll, they'll bring this back, our nation back online uh, according to your will. Father, be with the message this morning. God, I just pray, Lord, that it will touch hearts. I pray, Lord, that uh, these hearts will be open to it this morning. God, your Holy Spirit will rest on them and, and, and Father, give them hope, give them, uh, give them a new bit of, of outlook, a uh, positive outlook <clears throat> on the, the way we're headed, what we're, what we're involved in. God, I just pray this morning that uh, you would have your way and your will in the message and in, in the morning. Father, bless it now. Uh, use it as you will. For it's in the name of Jesus Christ for, uh, that we pray. And amen. This whole idea <clears throat> of rebooting, resetting, and purging prompted this message title, Control, Alt, Delete. Anytime you get your TV all out of whack, whether you have a cable box or a satellite box, the best way to fix it is to hit the reset button. At times, your automobile will act up and you'll get the old check engine light on your dash. So you take it to your mechanic and he looks it up on the hooks it up on the diagnose uh, to diagnose the problem. He sees the problem, he fixes the problem, and then he clears the codes. A few weeks ago, our refrigerator went on the blink after a trip to the grocery store, of course. We cleaned it all out, put stuff in the cooler, uh, bought bagged ice, and started looking for a new fridge. While we were looking, we decided to get out, of, get out the owner's manual and do some troubleshooting. Come to find out, if we would unplug the fridge, wait 40 minutes, and plug it back in, it might work. Guess what? It reset itself and works great. Everything at one time or another needs to be rebooted. It needs to have the reset button pressed. Sometimes we need to diagnose the problem, fix it, and clear the codes. These are strange times we live in. There has not been a stay-at-home order since the blood was applied to the doorpost and the lintel. Life has gotten out of hand. Stress and anxiety are on the rise. Helplessness and hopelessness are causing confusion at every turn. We are feeling loss of energy, loss of focus, and loss of purpose. We are preoccupied with the trivial and the temporary and have become obsessed with chasing that which we cannot catch. We are too busy, way too busy, and sadness and depression are the new norm for a lot of people. It's been said, I can't wait till things get back to normal. I don't think things will ever be as they once were. That was the old normal. But there is a new normal. A new way of life is emerging from this pandemic. And we have an opportunity to take advantage of it. It's time we gain a new perspective on the way we look at life. It also is a time to prioritize the way we spend our time. We need to remove the stress factors and eliminate the drama. Let's re-examine our motives and witness what God allowed to happen. God's not sitting in heaven wringing his hand saying, Oh my, I didn't see that coming. What am I going to do now? That's not our goal. My God is still on the throne. He's in, still in control, and he still allows things to take place in this world according to his plan. But with more than 36,000 deaths in the United States and more than 150,000 worldwide, lives and families have been changed forever. Job loss and business loss, along with economic uncertainty, 
is a main topic of concern. However, there are positives that have come from all of this. We quickly see better hygiene. My, my hands are so dried out, I, I, I just have to start using uh, Jurgens on them. Uh, we quickly see better hygiene. We see better air quality. The uh, pictures that we've seen of, of uh, big cities in, across the, the nation, Hong Kong and, and uh, Los Angeles, New York, uh, the smog that was hovering over, that, over those cities, uh, we've seen it gradually disappear. It dissipated, and there's blue skies there now. So we do have better air quality for the time being. Lower gas prices, the prices at the pump have just dropped, and and uh, my goodness, we, we've got all of our vehicles now are getting gallons per week. So uh, it's, it's just been, it's been great. Uh, another thing that's happened, teachers are missing their students. Kids are missing their school. And parents are missing the teachers. Family gatherings around the table the dinner table are once again realized. Neighbors are checking on neighbors again. So you see there's good things come out of this. There, there's positives on every, on every side. Another great benefit we've realized in our churches is that the stay-at-home order has actually spread the gospel. It is if, if Satan has said, I have shut down the churches, but God says, I've put a church in every home. Facebook and YouTube have exploded with pastors and evangelists and musicians proclaiming the word of God. People have found new ways to get the good news out to a greater audience, to a greater audience than ever before. I feel we are on the verge of a great revival a great spiritual awakening. People are reaching out with questions about salvation and eternity. This is the church's time to present the Word of God to folks that have that void in their lives. This is the time to get on board and serve the Lord in a greater way, to show the love of Christ to a world that has slowed down long enough to hit the control alt delete button. A lot of us have hit that button unknowingly. We've hit the reset button. We've we've uh, rebooted our lives. We have slowed down long enough to reevaluate, to look around, to stop and smell the roses as it were. Yes, I realize that uh, the TV's still on and uh, the problems are still out there. The world is still uh, dealing with the virus and dealing with the situation at hand. But our lives have slowed. Our lives have slowed down to a point where things have quieted. Our souls have quieted. Our minds have quieted. We've come out of the hamster ball, so to speak. We've stepped out and we're not in the rat race as we were. Some of us still are. I realize the hospitals are full and there's folks out there that are, that are more busy now than they ever were. But I'm generally speaking, most of the nation has calmed down. Most of the nation has come to that point where we're sitting back now and thinking and realizing and prioritizing and getting that new perspective on our lives and perhaps even the meaning of our life. Up to this point in the message, I've given you no scripture. And I generally have covered you up with scripture by now. Today I'm trying something a little different. I'm going to give you one verse. And we're going to dissect that verse and apply it to our lives as we move forward to the new normal. If you take this verse and own it, it will help you with your relationship with the Lord 
and also with the people you come into contact with every day. Let's look at the verse now and then make application to it. I want you to get your Bible and I want you to turn to the book of Proverbs. The book of Proverbs. The book of wisdom. Turn to the book of Proverbs, chapter 16. Proverbs, chapter 16. I'll give you a moment to get there. Y'all got to say amen. I heard two of them. Proverbs chapter 16, look at verse 3. Look at verse 3. It says, Commit thy works unto the Lord, and thy thoughts shall be established. Read it again. Look at it. Look at each word and look at it. Commit thy works unto the Lord, and thy thoughts shall be established. This is an all-inclusive verse which stands on its own. You'll notice it starts with a capital letter, ends with a period. It's one sentence, it's, it's a complete thought, a complete sentence. This verse should be easy for you to meditate on and to memorize. Mark it, circle it, highlight it. Do whatever you do so you can absorb the thought and intent of this verse. Make this verse a new verse for you. I've tried to get you to read scripture, to memorize scripture, to put it to memory so you can so you can meditate on it, meditate on it any time, so you can use it. This verse, Proverbs 16, 3, commit thy works unto the Lord, and thy thoughts shall be established. We're going to dissect it. We're going to look into it. And, the, and the, this verse is for you. It's personal. It uses the word thy, T-H-Y. And thy simply means your. It indicates personal possession. It indicates a personal experience with whatever they're talking about. These are your works and your thoughts. What do we do with them? Well, it's very clear. We are first to commit our works unto the Lord. We all know what commit means, and we are terrified of its meaning. We have such an awful time committing to anything today, whether it be relationships or long-term goals. To commit to anything is to give 100% devotion to that which we are engaged in. To commit means we are all in, no matter what may happen. It means that nothing can deter us from finishing that which is before us. Think about that for a minute. Think about that verse. What about works? What about that word works? What does the word works in this verse entail? Works in this text includes anything and everything we get involved in. The word conversation uh, is, is, is about the same thing as this word works in the Bible. Uh, the word conversation in the Bible often refers to our manner of life, our conduct, our behavior, simply put, our actions. So now what does it say? Look at the verse again. We are to give 100% devotion of our manner of life, our conduct, behavior, and actions to the Lord. And if we do that, then our intentions, our imagination, our plans, and our purpose will be established. These are all summed up in the word thoughts. It says they shall be established. The word established means to be proper, to stand firm, to prepare self, and to be set and stable. If you commit everything you do to the Lord, then all your plans and intentions will be properly prepared to be set and stable. We come to the application of the verse, and the Lord gave me a simple way for us to show that we love Him and want to serve Him. 
Here's the deep theological thought of the day. You ready? Be kind. That's it. Be kind. Just be kind. In a world like ours today, it's tough at times to be tolerant. But all we have to do is be kind. Show a little kindness to those around you, to those at the grocery store, maybe those at a drive through restaurant when you order. Perhaps you could pay for the person's order behind you in the line. Remember, you're not looking for recognition. You're wanting someone to realize there are still good people in this world who don't need to be recognized. Perhaps you could pump someone's gas for them especially if it's raining, or clean their windshield while they're pumping their own gas. Help someone with their groceries. Maybe they have big bags of dog food or bags of mulch to put in their trunk. Maybe you could return a shopping cart for them. The ways to be kind are out there. And the amazing thing is, once you start showing these random acts of kindness, people will start paying it forward. And your thoughts will be established. You will find all ways to show kindness to strangers and thus spread the love of Christ. Proverbs 16.3 Commit thy works unto the Lord and thy thoughts shall be established. You could almost I don't want to I don't want to take liberty with the with the with the scriptures by by changing them up but in this instance you can almost read it the other way and once you start doing it God's way here by committing your works unto the Lord your thoughts will be established and once your thoughts are established your your works are established it, it's contagious folks it keeps, it's a contagious thing. The more you do these random acts of kindness, the more you will think of new ways to do more acts of kindness. And the ones receiving the kindness will in turn pass it on. Let's make the new normal. One that leads others to salvation and exalts the name of Jesus. This time in, in our life, in our history, it's a new time. It's a strange time, as I said before. We've got many opportunities. This opportunity that we're we're taking advantage of here this morning, while we're all away and we're we're disconnected, uh, our church family is is, is split up, uh, so to speak, and, and we're we're all uh, at our homes. Uh, we love the face to face. We love the the personal touch. Uh, we love that seeing one eye to eye, uh, seeing seeing everybody smile, seeing a reaction. I, I've always hated texting on a phone. Um, I would just as soon pick up the phone and call you. And uh, texting's okay at times, and it's 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 all right. But you you tend to lose that personal touch, that that voice. Uh, you can hear inflection in the voice, and you can hear sadness. You can hear, you can hear laughter. You can hear joy. You can, you can hear those things, and and it's even greater when you see somebody face to face. It's nice when you stand on the porch and talk to them, or it's nice when you see them in the church house and, and uh, see them face to face. Those days will come back. We'll get there. Let's just be patient, and and, and while we're doing that, when Think of think of just being kind to folks. This is a time in, in everyone's life where tensions are high and and uh, depression sets in. Uh, a lot of you have been cooped up in the house and you are bored and you are tired and you're ready to bust out of that prison and get back to some sense of normalcy. I'm with you. I don't like it either. 
it, uh, it it's made me kind of lose my focus a little bit, lose my edge. Um, I, I've always felt better when I'm a little under pressure, and, and I work better under pressure at times. Uh, uh, I'm quicker on my feet. I, I think I think better. Um, it, it seems like uh, those times uh, now that we're home and we're uh, vegetating on the couch or in the recliner, uh, things have slowed down. But it has given us time to reflect, time to look at the world in a, in a, through a different lens. Take this time uh, to be kind. I, I learned something about Facebook the other day. And I was on our, our church site and, and I saw some tips on how to spread our church site around and, and, uh, and get more people involved with it. And it said just uh, send the link to all your friends. Have them invite them to come and like your, your church. And I thought, wow. I thought, uh, you know, I didn't think about that. So I, uh, I ended up going to my, to my uh, Facebook page and, and, uh, and, and my, my likes and, and my uh, friends and so on. And I noticed, praise the Lord, over the years, been on there many years, I had over 1,200 friends on Facebook. And some of those friends, don't get me wrong, folks, you're the same way I am. You're one of these, and we'll go through, and we'll just, and sometimes we'll hit a like, but very seldom comment, very seldom share anything. But our friends are out there, and our friends are scrolling, and they're looking, and they're watching. And I thought, you know, I'm just going to send out some. And I looked at how many people I'd shared the, the site with, and it was like 17 or 20, something like that. It wasn't many. So I just hit select all, and it selected all 1,200 and whatever there were. And it brought me right down, highlighted the word invite. And I pressed invite. Lo and behold, I guess it sent invitations to everyone on my friends list. <laughs> so if you've got one, join us. Hit the like button. Start following us. Uh, accept the invitation as many of you already have. I did it, and within uh, just a few minutes, uh, over 100 came on board. And since then, it's been over 200. Uh, I haven't checked it today, but it, it keeps adding on. And I thank you. Come and listen to us. And uh, listen to what God's Word has to say. I hope you were challenged by today's message. I, I hope that you'll take this time to reboot Hit the Control-Alt-Delete button. Purge all the dead stuff out of your life. Start with a clean slate, a clean hard drive. Uh, get everything uh, out of the way that's temporary and trivial and, and focus on Jesus Christ. Focus on the things that matter. We, we've got our families back around us. We've got our our. our priorities kind of in line again once once again and uh, our, our jobs I, I know some of us are without um, some of us are struggling but God has a way he's got a way of, of providing and uh, if, if there's if there's anybody in the world that can that can do that it's our God because he is great and he is powerful and he is ever present. And he is able to do exceedingly abundantly above all that we ask or think. Thank you for joining us today. I pray that uh, the weeks ahead will be easier, knowing that there's a light at the end of the tunnel. Uh, hang in there. Stay in the word. Take Proverbs 16.3 and put it to memory. Underline those words. Think about them. Commit thy works unto the Lord, and thy thoughts shall be established. Let's pray. Father in heaven, we thank you, Lord, for the day. We thank you for your message. God, we just pray, God, that you would uh, watch over our folks, watch over all those that are, have joined in today. I thank you, Lord, for each one of them. They are my friends. I know there's new ones that have joined and, and uh, watched the broadcast, and I pray, Lord, that your blessings would be upon them. God, I just pray that you would work your way and your will in our church and in our individual lives, that we may fulfill your plan and your purpose in this world. God, I just pray now that you would go with us, lead, guide, and direct 
We'll be careful to give thee praise, honor, and glory for it all. For it's in Jesus' name we pray. And amen. Thank you all. Have a great day.